and welcome to Sips with a Specialist. My name is Erin Rust, and I'm a specialist in our Native American Art Department here at Heinemann Auctions. Today, we will be discussing Southwestern jewelry, specifically early silver and turquoise jewelry famously made by Navajo artisans. The Navajo, or Diné, started making silver and metal jewelry around 1870, largely inspired by Mexican artists as well as their Southern Plains neighbors. Its city, Sani, is credited for being the first Navajo silversmith, beginning his career as a blacksmith making horse equipment such as bits and other utilitarian objects. He, in turn, quickly taught his sons, spreading the craft across Navajo country. Early Navajo jewelry is simplistic in design and crafted from silver, copper, or brass. These early pieces were crafted by hammering and filing down the metal, forming into slender, simple shapes that were simply decorated in etched or chiseled designs. Shortly following this technique, the Navajo began crafting jewelry and other ornaments from melted down silver. The silver was generally acquired from currency like Mexican pesos or American silver dollars and melted down into ingot blocks. Artists would then hammer and manipulate the block into their final shapes. These ingot pieces of jewelry began to be more elaborate with their decoration. Still in use were the techniques of chiseled and etched designs, but a new technique was introduced by Mexican silversmiths that of using metal dyes to stamp intricate shapes and designs into metal. The first dyes were acquired by the Navajos from their Mexican counterparts and shortly after Navajo artists creating their own dyes and stamp designs. The process of making jewelry from ingot was short in the grand scheme of Navajo jewelry making. In 1890, the U.S. government man banned despoiling coinage and thus began the shift from crafting jewelry from ingot to sheet metal, which reached fruition in the 1930s. Turquoise, even though popular as drilled and beaded ornamentation, is not set into metal jewelry until the 1880s, when master Navajo silversmith Itzidi Chan is credited in setting the first turquoise stone. Early turquoise jewelry used simply cut stones or repurposed beads set into handmade bezels. The designs became more elaborate as artists became more proficient. The Navajo may have started silversmithing among native peoples in the Southwest, but the technique quickly spread to the Zuni and Hopi as well, which in return created their own unique styles of jewelry. The Zuni would become expert lapidrists, becoming renowned for their mosaic and channel inlay designs, while the Hopi would become masters of the silver overlay technique, creating mesmerizing designs in silver. Navajo jewelry was initially created for personal use. Once the railroad made it to the Southwest in the 1880s, the tourists that trickled in to the area became more enamored with the unique style of jewelry that they found on their travels. This newfound tourist trade, along with the need for Navajo artists to acquire sheet metal, started the boom of trading posts that began to pop up all over the Southwest at the turn of the century. This boom in popularity set forth America's fascination with Southwestern silver and turquoise jewelry that is continuously popular today. Early Navajo jewelry can be tricky to date. When I date a piece, I first start with the design. Is there turquoise? Was the design chiseled, stamped, or both? Was the piece shaped as one chunk of metal or made using rolled wire strands? Next, I wanna see how the silver was formed. Is it ingot or not? If a piece is ingot, typically you will see crackling in the metal from it being formed and manipulated. Ingot also tends to have a heavier feel. Weight is not always a good indicator, but generally speaking, ingot tends to be heavier. Another thing I look at is use wear on the metal. For example, has the design softened due to the piece being worn? Are there light dings and scratches in the silver? Again, an indicator for wear. If the piece has turquoise, I'll take a close look at it. I'll look at the stone itself. Older turquoise will have a warm appearance and feel. This is due to the handling of the stone over years. Turquoise is generally a soft stone and will soak up the oils in the skin when handling. The stone will in turn develop a warmth and often change colors from the turquoise blue and then to a shade of green. It is not uncommon to see an older bracelet with different colored stones. The hardness of a stone can determine how that particular stone will age. A harder stone will not pick up the oil as much as a stone that is softer, thus creating the differences in color. Markings and signatures can also determine the age of a piece. Early Navajo jewelry was not signed or marked by the artist. There could be an etching by a later owner or a price mark from a pawn shop or trade post. Markings and signatures on native jewelry really did not become commonplace until the second quarter of the 20th century. 
I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Sips with a Specialist. Please join us again in two weeks. Cheers. <laughs>